we're going to work with words and if you're a mixed media artist like I am who loves words and um, little quotes and little poems that we see on the internet and in books and in magazines quite often then you probably love um, using those words into your own work of art and your own art journals so I thought I would show you how I incorporate um, a small poem or a small quote into one of my artworks by simply uh, painting the background and making it look all pretty and writing or handwriting the words on top of that. Basically the quote is going to be the main focal element so you don't need anything else, anything too fancy that's going to distract from those inspiring words. But instead of talking, let me demonstrate what I do. So first of all, I choose a quote that I love. And this time, this is going to be a quote by Audrey Hepburn. I'll read it out to you and maybe it will inspire you straight away like it did <laughs> for me. And it says, um, I believe in pink. I believe that laughing is the best calorie burner. I believe in kissing, kissing a lot. I believe in being strong with everything seems to be going wrong. I believe that happy girls are the prettiest girls. I believe that tomorrow is another day and I believe in miracles. I just think it's absolutely beautiful and really wonderful. And I really feel touched by this quote. So I wanted to incorporate it into a painting. Now, as you can see, it's quite a long quote, uh, meaning that it's going to cover most of my surface here. I'm going to work on a sheet of A3 that's about 30 by 40 centimeters, or roughly 12 by 16 inches, I believe, um, of acrylic painting paper. So I'm just gonna leave it on the pad for now. And what I'm going to do basically is fill in the background with color, just using acrylic paints. Because this quote starts with I believe in pink, then it seems suited to use um, some pink in there and it's actually quite a, a girly quote and that's what I love about it So I'm going to stick with girly colors and go for pretty much any shade of pink that I've got Laying around some are light some are darker some more and more magenta um, And some purples as well that I've got here We go well together obviously purple and pink always a good combination and I'll probably add some white so I'm not saying I'm going to use all of those and I'm not saying you should have all of these as well just a few will be fine and um, if you add some white to those colors then it will give you a greater range of colors so let's get started and uh, we're going to use our fingers to paint the background you're obviously welcome to use a brush if you prefer um, but you know, it's it's more fun I think to use our fingers and it feels like we're connecting more with our piece of artwork in front of us here So I'm gonna grab a palette squeeze out some paints on there and then we'll get started Now obviously this quote may not be that inspiring to you and you might have something else in mind So you don't need to use pinks or purples like I am Basically just follow the technique which will be the same on principle. You know, it can be blues, it can be greens, it doesn't really matter. It can be col colors that are completely different from each other like blue, green, yellow, pink, purple. You can make a whole rainbow of colors in the background. And that's okay because we can always tone it down later on. So just go nuts. For me, I'm just going to put a few blobs of pink on my palette. I'm not going to need that much of each one. And I'll probably add some turquoise in there actually later on. I'm just going to start with these. A few blobs of pink and purple. And oops, a little bit of white as well, I think. Definitely to tone down and create different shades. All right. Now I'm going to use my finger, as I mentioned. Take a brush if you prefer, but I really encourage you to use your fingers. It's way more fun. And dip it in a bit of white and your first color. It doesn't matter which one you start with. And just rub this color into your surface, whether it's canvas or paper, in a circular motion until you have no paint left on your fingers. See, I've got almost nothing left now. 
and then we're just going to keep doing this and mix all of these colors together and fill in our whole surface so we're going to start with, i'm going to start with pink and purple and then we'll see if we want to use other colors later on and i'm just going to um, make sure that my different colors contrast with each other so i'm not going to put too much pink in one corner then too much purple in another i'm just going to alternate pink purple pink and purple and you know use the white here and there to separate them as well Okay, so I've filled in my whole background with the beautiful pinks and purples. It's not perfect. You can still see a little bit of the paper underneath, but that's okay because we're going to do another layer very soon. So I'll show you what we've got for now so you get you know, an idea of where we're going. And then we're going to leave all this to dry. I think I'm going to use my hair dryer just to speed things up. You can let things dry naturally if you like, of course, or use a heat gun. Just make sure that you constantly move and don't stay in one spot for more than a few seconds at a time. And then we can move on to our next layer. Okay, now that everything's dry, just make sure that it really is and take your time drying this before we keep going because if you add wet paint on top of slightly wet paint underneath it's going to create a mess and that might be a little bit hard to fix and might give you some little um, edges rough edges on your paper or canvas so make sure it's all dry so since I've used 
um, use warm colors you know the pinks are quite warm and magentas and the purples I'm going to use a cool color on top in the shape of a light turquoise as I mentioned earlier but if you started with cool colors let's say greens and blues then maybe you could add some magenta or some red on top so I'm going to do a turquoise as I mentioned and I'm going to use this one and I'm going to repeat the same process of rubbing in a little bit of paint with my fingers so exactly the same way I'm just going to add a little bit on my palette here and do the same So that's enough for the blue at the moment and the white as well so just by adding a little bit of white to my blue I've just created a few shades of blue uh, very easily and I wasn't trying to do anything in particular I'm just you know rubbing the paint in random patches of color just trying to get a fairly soft effect but that is contrasting at the same time so the blue is contrasting with the purple here or with the magenta um, and the magenta with the white and that sort of thing so basically as long as you don't have any big flat colors I'm um, sorry any bit big <laughs> flat areas of color and then that's pretty much all you need to achieve so we're going to let this dry before we move on Now to add a little bit of um, interest on my background, I'm not going to add any more colors. I don't want it to be overly busy and I want to stick to a, a pink and sort of mauve and blue kind of color scheme. But I'm going to add some gold that will make, you know, a, a bit of um, the colors pop out and it will create a little bit of interest and a bit of shine coming through the different layers later on. So I'm just going to go and straighten to my finger add a little bit of of a blob not even a blob just a tiny bit there less is more <laughs> and do exactly the same by rubbing it in a few areas i'm not going to cover the entire surface but just going to add a few bits and pieces here doesn't matter if you're creating some marks they don't have to be um, blended completely it actually creates a little bit of texture so that's always good texture is always good so I'm just rubbing it in leaving my marks make sure you put some at least near the edge as well
This is also a good way to cover any little areas that may not be painted just yet, where you can still see your canvas or your paper. Make sure you're not too neat with this. It can be a little bit rough. Like I said, if you have a few marks, it's a good thing because it creates a little bit of texture and interest. Okay, for this step you'll want to make sure that your whole surface is completely dry because we are going to stamp over it and if your paint is slightly damp um, this the ink is not going to stick properly the stain may stick to the paint it's going to be messy so again make sure everything's dry always between each layer it's quite important now you're going to need an acrylic block to put your cling stamp on and you're going to need a stamp um, that is a little bit chunky and preferably a little bit um, sort of flourishy, I guess that could be in a, the word. But basically what I'm going for is something that has some swirls and it could be something with flowers. It doesn't have to be the same as mine. The same technique can be used with different stamps and different colors. It's exactly the same. But just go for some a pattern that you like um, that you're going to use all over the page so obviously something that you're going to <laughs> really enjoy but i'm going to use this one it's had some a little bit of a of wear already and i'm going to stick it on my acrylic pad block sorry and i'm going to use this stays on in stone gray it's a beautiful ink pad that really pretty much uh, allows you to stamp on most surfaces that come across and that's my favorite one so i definitely recommend this one because it's a dark grey instead of a black, it will give us a really nice contrast without being too um, too stark, basically. The black would be quite good too, but it's going to be very intense. So the dark grey is close, but not quite. <laughs> so I'm going to stamp uh, my ink pad directly onto the stamp. And then what I'm going to do, I'll show you without the block is that I'm going to repeat it all across the page. I want the entire background filled with it. Because it's obviously quite small compared to my surface, I'm going to try to match it as best as I can and repeat it that way. And then instead of going exactly the same, I'm going to alternate. So if I start it here, there, and then it ends with the, this corner here, then I'll start with the full stem there, keep going, and then sort of alternate it in places. You can obviously go this way as well if you prefer. Um, same thing really. All right, let's get started.
have finished stamping my whole background and it looks absolutely gorgeous if I may say so myself. I hope that it's turning out quite well on your side too. But basically I've created a fairly seamless background with, uh, with this pattern and it's looking really good. Especially with the gold shining through from behind the stamped areas. So I'm really happy with it. I'm going to give you a quick, um, a quick close up so you can see where we are now. We're now going to work on the placement of our quote and for this I suggest that you find a piece of scrap paper that is the same shape as the surface you're working on but smaller. So I'm working on an A3 sheet of paper so I'm going to use an A4 scrap piece of paper just so I can pretend that this page here is my canvas. And I'm going to sort of try to work out how I'm going to place my words. So I'm going to look at the quote again. As I said before, there's a little bit of text in there, so it may take a little bit of time. But I'm going to create, I'm going to count first how many lines I've got. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six lines, but again, some of them are quite long. So I'm going to start with roughly tracing six lines. One, two, three, four, five, six. A little bit of space because I have a feeling that it's going to, the last one or one of them is going to be cut in half. We'll see. And then I'm going to play with um, placing those words on here and see how I'm going to fit things on this overall page. If you have only a few words, then it's probably going to be a lot easier. If your quote is longer, then it just requires a little bit of thinking ahead, that's all. So, uh, while I was writing the words on my paper, I kind of decided to make the first and the last part um, the main focus. Basically, I believe in pink is on a line on its own, and I believe in miracles on a line on its own at the end. And uh, I've forgotten a word here. So, the emphasis will be on these two lines, which is a good thing. And the rest, um, instead of creating one line per um, sentence here, well, I've continued basically. So, you know, it, it just makes you read the whole thing as a whole rather than each line per line, <laughs> if that makes sense. So I've had to add a few lines uh, vertically as well to make sure everything fits. 
but that's okay. So this is, I'm going to basically roughly try to reproduce this in the center of my page here. So this section here. And um, I'm going to need three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines. And obviously this is painting and mixed media and not everything has to be perfect. So don't worry if you, you know, there's a bit of space that is uneven between each line or it's not completely perfect. It doesn't matter. Relax, breathe a little bit. It's all good. And you're creating this for yourself. So that's fine. So let's start by tracing eight lines roughly where we've got them here on this piece of paper. Just have to get my roller first. Okay, so I've got all my lines down. As you can see, um, you know, it didn't go as smoothly as planned, but that's okay. It sometimes it's a little bit hard or harder just to try to uh, make things a little bit uneven on purpose rather than doing something symmetrical. We could have just um, divided everything, um, you know, very neatly and have everything perfect, but I didn't want to have anything too even. So that's why I kind of erased a few lines and started again until um, I'm quite happy. So the spacing in between each one is a little bit uneven on purpose. And these lines are just going to be my guide and I will just delete them or erase them later on when I'm done. Now that I've got my lines, I'm ready to trace the text onto those lines, but I'm going to start doing them with my pencil just to make sure I get everything roughly where I want it to be. So you may not be able to see clearly what I'm doing here, but I'm just basically um, copying this as it is onto here. So I've traced my words on here and as I said they're quite fainted but they're going to act as a guide for me when I trace over with permanent a permanent ink pen. So you know if I look sideways I can see the graphite um, shine a little bit but it's it's very subtle and it also allows me to sort of position the words as I want so they are fairly centered on each line. Now the next step is going to be to trace them with a white sharpie pen now i've got an oil base one here with the pink strip but um that because that it's very difficult to get the water based version here in australia but thankfully one of my youtube subscribers is sending me one over from the states so um, i'll be able to use the blue one the water based one later on so i recommend that you go for the blue strip sharpie instead of the pink one because everyone tells me that it's better but in the meantime, it still does the job quite well. So I'm going to go over and trace every single word now. Okay, so that's my first layer with the white pen. You may have noticed that I decided to change the placement a tiny bit as I went along because it just felt good. So follow what feels right to you. And uh, we're going to dry this off quite well and then retrace again in exactly the same manner with the exact same pen to make the white 
more um, visible there. around looks a lot better still not as strong as I would like in some areas so I'm going to trace it a third time basically just go over until you're happy with the result Okay, so when you are completely certain that everything is completely dry, that's very important, I know I keep repeating it, I actually left mine to dry overnight to be sure that nothing would move when we erase the pencil lines. So that's why you need to make sure that nothing is going to smudge, it's really important. So let's erase those lines before we move on to the next step. So don't worry too much if you can still see a little bit of the pencil through the white text. It doesn't really matter. It won't be that visible later on. So don't panic. <laughs> now, because we've used pretty fat lines um, to outline this text in white, we're now going to make it look a little bit prettier by using a black marker pen. This one is a Uni Posca pen and the tip is 0.7 mil. Uh, wide or in diameter I should say so 0.7 mil black Posca pen or anything similar okay so what we're going to do with this Posca pen is outline every single word that we have written here in white and I did a little example first so I can explain it better I'll show you up close So all you're going to do is use your black pen to go around every single letter on the outside and the inside as well. And it's a good time to tidy up any sort of um, white lines that may not look that pretty at the moment. <laughs> 